We've seen a lot of social change over the last couple of decades, and one thing I'm convinced about is that the change in technology is directly proportional to this change in social culture. Um, so today I'm going to walk you guys through the history of computing interfaces and talk about and introduce you to one of the biggest technologies that is going to have the most impact on it during our lifetimes. So um, if we go back all the way to the 1940s, computing was very complex but would be able to do very basic uh, functions. Alan Turing at that time was working in the, with the British Army to decode German codes. Um, and one of these bomb machines was one of the best computers available in the world. Um, just in 20 years, the mainframe, IBM's mainframe computer, was really popular for enterprise use. And already, although it would still fit in massive rooms, it was much smaller. Um, you go forward another 20 years, and some people realize that maybe we could just take this computer and shrink it down and put it in a bedroom. Um, and the whole PC revolution as we know it came about. Another 20 years, and during the last few decades which we have been alive in, smartphones um, have become the major computer interface with all the fancy cameras and sensors allowing us to do everything that we do every day. Now, if you look at this trajectory, it's quite phenomenal. It's every 20 years, certain things happen with the most popular computer. One of the major things that happens is that it goes down in cost. It goes down in price, and it goes up in immersiveness. Immersiveness, when I talk about it, I think it's, it's a few things. It's portability. You can carry it more. You can have a more real-time experience with it, a more rich, real experience with it. If you find K2, the best you can do is come back and tell a story. But now you can go take a picture and bring it back with you. Soon you'll be able to live stream it. And now if you look at these three factors and imagine what would theoretically be the end point? What will happen at the end? What will be the last computing interface? If it goes down in price to such an extent that it's free, if it goes down to such an extent in size that it's invisible, and it goes up in immersiveness to such an extent that whatever is in your mind, you can share it with someone else. And so if we peer into the future, um, what looks like to be the, the future um, interface is brain-computer interfacing. When the barrier of language has just disappeared, right now I'm talking to you, right? There's something in my head, I'm putting out some words, you're listening to them, and based on those, those words, you're forming an image or an idea of what is in my head. But I, what I think is that the theoretical end of computer interfacing is when whatever is in my head, I can drive directly transfer it to yours. Whatever idea I want to convey with a spreadsheet, I can just transfer it to yours. Um, we're not there yet, but that's where things are pointing towards. So, um, now why do I get to stand here and tell you all of this? Um, it's because my work over the last few years has been about speculating technological progress through art and design. I try to predict and look at what might come in the future, and I try to make it as clear to the public as possible using, uh, using design and art as my tools. Um, I'll walk you over to, uh, to two of the projects that I worked on over the last few years. One of them was a project called Noema. Noema is a project I worked on with a very good friend of mine from the Czech Republic. He came with me, he lived with me in Pakistan for a while. I went with him to Prague in Europe and we worked on it. Um, Noema was this iOS app, so it was in the phone division. What we were doing was that we were imagining a platform which where you would feed in information all in voice. You would talk in audio, your own real voice, not text or images. This is something I'll go back to later. But voice was very important for us. And the future we were imagining was that we would be able to use all this voice data to make a person, Noema, who would understand all the thoughts of the world that people would be uploading into it. It was a very ambitious idea, obviously. It was almost a speculative idea, as I said before, imagining what the future might look like. But not only did we imagine, we actually ended up making a real app and putting it on the App Store to see how, uh, what type of reaction we would get from people. This is what Noema looked like. Um, it was incredibly radical at that time in terms of its design. It is a zero inter the interfaces goes around the philosophy of having a zero interface. The interface is almost all audio. You talk to it and it talks back to you and that's how the, communi the communication goes. 
Um, we got a really interesting response. A lot of people downloaded the app. And the weirdest things were uploaded to it. But obviously, since it was a speculative design uh, process, it was immensely taken down. Um, but even now, in my work today, Noema is of great significance, and I'll go back to that later. The next project that I'm going to share with you is uh, a project I did last summer while I was living in Silicon Valley, San Francisco. And I titled the project Aurelia, and it's one of the first art projects I worked on. Although it's an art project, it's very directly in link with technology and all the ideas that I've been talking about before. This is one of the images I made while working on Aurelia. So the idea of Aurelia is that in art, there's an abstract expressionist movement. This idea that you have thoughts and ideas in your head, and you use a paintbrush to put them out, and another person who sees this image kind of understands the same feeling. Although this image doesn't have to be a person, it can be very abstract, it can just be a single color, but it, it tries to get the message across. Inspired by this movement, um, I worked on Aurelia, but this time, I worked directly with the brain. Instead of using a paintbrush, I wore a brain scanner that would read electrical signal in my brain and predict with some computer logarithms what I was feeling. It would read all this electrical signal, try to predict if I'm excited or focused or in a meditative state, and based on all that information, it would just be paint an image of different colors merging together to convey the feeling that I'm feeling. So for example, if you look at this image, that this image was made while I was sleeping. Um, although you don't know that, it does give that feeling. It was just literally, literally made by a computer program in the brain scanner. I was wearing it while I was sleeping. And the reason all these colors are so blurry and merging with each other, because I was not focused. I was in a relaxed state. So that comes through in the image. Um, now projects like this point towards this future I'm talking about where we will be directly able to share information from one brain to another. But before we get there, we've talked about what has been and what will be. But now let's talk about what is the technology, the computer interface that is going to define our present decade. And that is mixed reality. Mixed reality or augmented reality is this idea that you can wear a headset which is slowly going down in size and you can see computer interfaces and 3D objects and holograms in your virtual space. A lot of you might have heard about virtual reality when you wear an Oculus Rift or a device which has a screen and it blocks your world. You cannot see any of your own reality but you're in another world. This is different and I think much better. Um, instead of explaining it to you, let me try to give you a little demo. 